basically you need to unlearn that and learn a new style of driving now uh, winter driving is a little risky uh, there are options other than that also <laughs> Welcome to Miles Vlogs. Uh, today we are going to talk about a very important topic, which uh, many of you have uh, uh, asked me questions in my Instagram as well as my YouTube channel. So today we are going to talk about taking a driving license in Saskatchewan. Okay, <laughs> so a lot of people ask me that question, and I am so happy that you know people are planning to take a license here and drive mainly because. Uh, there are options other than that also. So I'll explain everything in detail. This might be a long video because there's a lot of fact and contents and some information might not be accurate. So that's the disclaimer. So first of all, the governing factor in Saskatchewan to issue any kind of license or motor uh, vehicle uh, registrations are, uh, you know, like all those kind of things is called as SGI, which is Saskatchewan Government Insurance. I think, uh, yeah, it, SDI should be that, mm, or governing ins insurance, no, it's, it's, it's Saskatchewan government insurance, okay, it's called as SGI, so unlike other provinces, uh, all licenses and, you know, any kind of thing related to motor or, you know, like uh, vehicles and all those things are governed by SGI, so uh, once you come to Saskatchewan, uh, first thing you can do is you also get uh an id um, in case you don't have a driving license you don't have any kind of id sgi also uh, can issue you a photo id so whenever i'm doing a video on what are the important things to do to saskatch uh, do once you come to saskatchewan i'll include that so um if you ask me is it important to take a license as a student as soon as you come here i would consider it important and i did take a license in the first one month itself because i thought it's always better that you have the license of the country that you're driving in know the rules and regulations and then drive but there are a lot of people students or people who are in work permit who are driving with their uh, license which was issued from their home country uh, so there's a, um, I think you can drive during the time you are a student or, you know, till the time your work permit expires, there's some catch to that. Uh, but then uh, you are allowed to drive with your Indian license or, you know, you need to check which all licenses are accepted. You can also come here to the, and ch check in one of the SGI offices whether you are uh, eligible to drive with your uh, license from your home country. Okay, so I have had a lot of friends who have done that. But today I'm going to talk about how important it is to actually get a driving license from Canada or from Saskatchewan if you're driving here, okay? The main reason why I would stress on this point is unlike India, if you are coming from a place like India or Pakistan or Africa or whichever place you're coming from, uh, you are used to a very different style of driving, okay? Uh, basically, you need to unlearn that and learn a new style of driving. So, I would suggest that you get proper training or, you know, take a proper test and then get the license and start driving rather than just driving with your home country license, mainly because the fines that you get here are quite heavy. It's not like, you know, you have like maybe $50 fine and all the fines are quite heavy. So why do you want to unnecessarily pay fines and get into trouble? And also, uh, it's not that, you know, you can get away with things here, like uh, where we come from. Uh, so you, uh, you might be pulled over by the police. Uh, they might ask for your um, proper license, those kind of things, right? So don't get into trouble. Try to get the license as soon as you come here. So now I'm going to tell you uh, what are the type of licenses or you know how to take them okay. So the first uh, type of license that you will come and take here is a class 7 license. This is specific to Saskatchewan. This is not for any other province. This is specific to Saskatchewan. So first license that you will come and take in Saskatchewan is class 7 license which is also called as a learner's license back in India or even here it's called as a learner's license. So basically this is just like a test that you write okay. Uh, so I would suggest if you are an experienced driver back in India or whichever country you're coming from 
get uh, your driving extract driver abstract, uh, extract abstract um, it is very very important that you bring your abstract because that shows that you were a responsible driver back in your home country and this is something you can present to the SGI here and there are benefits for that second thing you need to bring is your physical copy of your driving license it's very very important that you have your physical copy if it's a card if it's a book I had like that old folding type of book which was issued when I was 18 years so I, I had actually gone to the RTO office back in my uh, town I mean my hometown and then you know like got the abstract and all those things so it's very important you bring your driving abstract and your physical hard copy uh, of the license the third thing I, I got was the, an international license because I was thinking, okay, maybe I can come and drive here an international license, but I wouldn't suggest you spend money on that and take it. It's not necessary, but if you want to, you can just bring it for the safety purpose, but they're not necessary. So these two things, the first two things, that is a driving license ex abstract and the physical copy of your driving license is very, very important. Why it's important is what I'm going to tell now. As soon as you present your uh, license to the SGI, when you're like going to give your uh, learner's test or your class 7 license, they'll ask you, you know, if you have previous experience, do you have a driver's abstract from back home? So when you present this, they're going to look at the year that you got your license, how many years you've been driving. So in my case, it was from the time I was 18, even though I didn't drive for a couple of years, I was very scared to drive. Um, I think I started driving properly maybe from my 20 or 21 years. So I have got more than like 10 to 15 years of experience, right? So they are going to actually check how many years of experience you have. If you have any uh, like uh, uh, deviations or, you know, uh, faulty driving in your abstract or the those kind of things and if they see that you are uh, clear with all those things and you have a good amount of experience back home then you actually get the benefit of not attending classes for a class 5 license okay I'll get into the detail but just remember this so uh, the first thing that you need to do is um, you can go to an SGI office once you uh, land uh, here you know and you, you're ready to uh, take your learner's license or your class 7 license you can go to an SGI office or uh, go uh, create an account on SGI uh, the online portal and uh, you can register for your class 7 learner license exam okay so that's around 25 Canadian dollars so once you pay that on a specific day I think you can even walk in for the class 7 uh, license yeah you can walk in you can just go to an SGI office and tell you want to take the learner's test so it's like a computer based test that you'll have so um, uh, two things that will happen there is first thing is you'll have a computer based uh, test which is divided into two sections if I remember it right. One is mainly science and the second one is mainly situations that you know, you know if you are approaching a road you know do you, how, which side are you allowed to turn right those kind of things right. And um, you can prepare for this uh, through the SGI booklet, which you can get a physical copy from the SGI office or some of your friends might have it. Or you can actually have an online version on the SGI portal. So just go to the SGI um, online portal and you have all information there. But this is just a first hand experience that I am giving it from my end. Okay. So once that happens, once you are ready to give the test, uh, once you prepared with the book and all those things, right? Don't be overconfident that you will clear. Okay, I'm telling you there are a lot of people who failed in this test, mainly because it's very, very confusing. These tests, uh, the sign test is okay because obviously if you learn the sign and it's not like signs back home, right? It's not stop, go, that, those kind of signs. It's, it's, they're, they're like zillion signs, especially when you drive on a highway, the, what is a sign for Saskatchewan highways? What is a sign for this? Uh, snow moving, though, the, the, like I can't tell you how many signs are there. So <laughs> you have to like definitely i would suggest that you prepare well and go why do you want to waste like 25 dollars again right so prepare well even if you're prepared don't be like uh, don't get tensed once you go and sit there because there's all the possibility that you might goof up so be very calm and composed and then write the test and even if if you are uh, you know looking at the other person system and asking somebody and all they will cancel it and then you know they have even heard situations in Ontario and all where they have not been allowed to write an exam for some time and those kind of things right so don't do all those kind of things be be very clear on how you want to attend the exam and go 
pay for pay twenty five dollars and you attend the test. So in this test mainly, as I told you, there are two sections. One is for science, the other one is mainly situational based. Once you clear that, I think you need eighty percent to clear the exam. Okay, so once you clear that, um, uh, you they will actually ask you to go and do a vision test. So it's just like a, um, a machine that is there. You need to just put your face onto it. They'll just um, check your vision and all those things, and then you get your class seven license. In case you don't pass your class seven license, you can reattempt. Okay, it's not a big deal. It's just that you will waste twenty five dollars. So after you get your class seven license, this is like a learner's license back home. Okay. Um, so class seven is required for any category of license that you're planning to take in Saskatchewan. I'm mainly talking about cars or you know uh, four wheel vehicle, four four wheel drive vehicles, uh, not about bikes and all those things. So once you take the license, then you can start practicing. I had my license back in India for so many years. I was also driving in Dubai, which I always get the right uh, confused with the right hand and left hand. Okay, Dubai and Canada driving is the same. You sit, the driver sits on the left side of the vehicle, unlike uh, India or other places where we sit on the right. So if you are a person who does not have experience sitting on the left hand side, again that's one more thing that you need to learn once you come here. But if you are a person who has experience, like I had experience driving in Dubai, uh, so I was thinking, okay, why well, like I can just take the license? It shouldn't be a problem. But I'm telling you. the rules in dubai and in canada or in specifically in saskatchewan are so different uh, basic is the same but there are so many other additional rules that you need to learn or unlearn i would say uh, when you are coming here so like uh, things like three second stop and those kind of things which you won't be aware if you if you're not taking classes or if you are actually not practicing with the experienced class 5 uh, driver uh, you know who has a license here so i i would suggest even though i had a license in dubai uh, i would suggest that you take like couple of classes here mainly because you need to know the rules or mainly you need to know what the uh, the uh, sgi examiner who's going to take your test is going to look for right at least for that i would suggest you take couple of classes you can just uh, check gg or you know you can check facebook marketplace and all those places you can get instructors the only thing is their availability will also be limited so you need to like uh, get a good instructor check for references you can ask your friends who are already here and those kind of things and hire an instructor and at least take two to three classes guys guys don't don't be over confident you can just drive i have seen lot of people do that and they've got fines or you know they've ended up with accidents and those kind of things so take two or three classes one class might be around 30 to 35 dollars for one hour yeah it is expensive but uh, i would suggest you do that okay so um this is this class i'm saying the two or three classes is mainly for people who have had experience okay for who does not have experience um i think i should start with that after your class 7 if you don't have experience you will get a novice novice one okay it's not novice it's novice one uh class 5 license which is which is a license wherein you know you don't have experience you've taken couple of classes and then after getting that license you after giving your test and if you get the license you need to drive for like 9 months without any incidents okay incidents means accidents or any kind of you know uh, things that you're not supposed to do so you, uh, in uh, novus one there are couple of restrictions wherein you know i think uh, you have to drive with a class 5 license a uh, person sitting next to you without fail like you cannot um um you know uh, get away with it you need a experienced driver sitting next to you at all time okay uh you also i think you can only have your immediate family members or things like that and you cannot have like have like there's a limitation for alcohol that you can have you cannot have alcohol drugs or any kind of thing you cannot use cell phones you cannot use any screens nothing okay uh, it's it's a very very strict or you know uh, a license with very limited loopholes or you know like now i wouldn't say loopholes uh, with a very strict uh, criteria as of how you should drive so that's no voice on this is if you don't have experience at all okay uh, and then after 9 months they will mail you the uh, novus 2 uh, novus 2 uh, license uh, which uh, i think in which you can actually have uh passengers at the back seat and you know not, like not your immediate family members but you can also have other passengers but only those people um if if you have a vehicle which has four seat belts that is two in the front two at the back you can only have that that many passengers at the back seat 
you cannot actually have more than um, uh, one uh, family member who's out i mean uh, you cannot have more than one person who's outside your family uh, so with novus 1 and 2 the thing is you're restricted to only have family members uh, in your car right when you're driving so in novus 2 the only exception is that you know you can actually have an additional member other than your family and you can drive with them and things like that so if you go to the sgi um, uh, portal you will get a detailed explanation of what are the restrictions i am not i didn't take that and i read through but it's it's a little confusing so if you want you can just go to the website if you have any questions just message below and i can respond i can do my research and respond to it so this is for uh, people without uh, any experience, right? Driving experience back home. So after Novus 2 uh, and you drive for a particular amount of time, uh, they will actually send you the class 5 license. So class 5 license is a full license, uh, like a full-fledged license where you have minimal uh, restrictions on, you know, what you should do, what you should, uh, shouldn't should do and those kind of things. So basically, it's like a proper license, okay? Novus 1 and 2 are the ones which comes before class 5 license uh, and has a lot of restrictions. So try your best. The reason why I'm asking you to bring your abstract is so that you can directly go ahead for a class 5 license that is a full license rather than novice one or two because obviously it, it has a lot of restrictions right like you cannot do any kind of part-time jobs with it you cannot drive a cab you cannot drive you cannot get into jobs which you might want to as a student right so i would suggest you uh, go ahead with the class 5 license so for that bring your the dl extract abstract i don't know why i'm going to say extract abstract and those kind of things so uh so if you are an experienced driver back home and um, you know the the SGI officer who is at the uh, uh, you know where you're taking your uh, class 7 test feels that you can go ahead directly for a class 5 license they tell you you don't need classes okay but if they feel that you have very limited experience and you know you uh, you need more training they'll tell you you need to take so many uh, hours of classes like i think it's 6 hours in in uh, uh, in inside I mean in class uh, um, training and then uh, the other one is in car training and those kind of things so to avoid all that and you know for each training obviously you're paying money right so to avoid all that it's better you bring the abstract or you know if, if you don't have experience you have no option you have to go through these phases so after all that uh, once you are very sure that you are ready to take your class 5 license at, I mean the final license uh, you need to either you can book it online or you can go to any SGI office and book for uh, your road test uh, which is around 55, 55 Canadian dollars okay mm, so once you book for your road test that is on a specified date it's not like walk-in and all those things so I'll tell you my experience uh, this is I took my license in Saskatoon uh, because I landed there and I took it in the first month itself I took it in Saskatoon okay so Saskatoon is a much bigger uh, city as compared to Regina or Moose Jaw. Mm, it has its plus and minuses but then I would say that it was a little more scarier for me to drive in uh, Saskatoon because it had like larger highways and those kind of things. Uh, so some things that they will check. So as soon as you get your driving uh, uh, date okay i had taken uh, three to four classes with an instructor whom i found in saskatoon and uh, he was very good in the sense he told me where all they'll take me for the test like which roads they might take me on what what all should i look out for there's some things where i where, where they are very very specific you need to like do your shoulder check it's not like you look like this right you need to like turn around your head and look and then you know you need to uh, uh, you know do your mirror checks uh, pedestrians ha are highly highly important here uh, you know so you're maintaining your speed when you're in a school zone uh, maintaining your speed when you're on a highway all these kind of things they're going to check and they're very very strict so you can have nine uh, demerits or less okay if you have mm, i mean you can have up to nine demerits yeah, uh, like I don't know whether you can understand, like in a sense, in a score of 1 to 20, you imagine, okay, you can have 9 mistakes, that is acceptable, or lesser, okay, but if you have 10 mistakes or more, you fail that exam, and they might issue you a novice 1 or 2, okay, 
so uh, be very careful be extra careful when you give your exam because uh, i wouldn't suggest you actually write an ex i mean do a road test and get into a novice one or two because then again you're going back with a lot of restriction right with your license so do like study properly like do proper training and then give i've i've seen some of my friends who are highly experienced have driven in saudi and dubai and all those places but come here and they fail their exam okay so uh since i knew how difficult a dubai ex driving exam was i didn't want to fool around because i knew it's a little different than dubai it's a little uh, like the rules are different i, I didn't want to like uh, get a novice one or two so i made sure i do a proper training and i got my license in the first try okay uh so um for me that's very important right if you're coming to a country it's very important that you learn their rules and regulations and then drive so you reach the sga office in the morning it's already 19 minutes okay i don't know how i'm going on explaining so you reach the sga office the day that, that you're given you have to bring your own car you i mean it's unlike in india where you can have a car from your driving instructing instructor school or something of that sort you need to bring your own car or your friend's car and the car should also be safe enough to take the test so they uh, the um what do you say the uh, examiner will also check if your car is fit so uh, before even starting the test they'll check your indicators they'll ask you to put the brake and things like that so that they know that when the car gets into the road it's safe to drive so after that um they will check how you are right if you've taken a test in dubai i think it's almost similar so as soon as you get in you need to put your you're already sitting in the car when they come so they'll come by the window and ask you is, is this your name those kind of things then they'll get into the car they'll have like a che checklist they'll verify your um uh, what is it identity and all those kind of things and then they will take the test so it will be parked and then you need to take out take it out for the parking so obviously they want to check if you put the belt if you put the indicator while turning uh if you are following the rules on which side of the road how much you're turning your shoulder checks and guys i'm telling you it's it's it's, it's a little tough okay i'm not scaring you but i felt it was a little tough because as soon as you turn right they'll ask you uh, to tell you know go to the intersection and turn left so those kind of things so you need to be very careful that you're listening to your instructor properly and not goofing it up you can have up to nine mistakes but i'm telling you that nine mistakes gets over very fast uh and then uh if you don't have any kind of uh, training with an instructor in canada you don't know what to do when right it's always better to take some training from a experienced driver from canada and uh, from saskatchewan and then give the test and uh, uh, obviously when before giving the test they are going to ask you for your uh, proof of identity uh, you i think you need two proof of identity then you need a proof of uh, residence and then obviously you know uh, like uh, if you have your work permit or those kind of things you can show them and um, as a student you are issued a license which is uh, valid till the end of your work uh, study permit and uh, once you get your work permit you need to keep extending that's how ha what happens so even like last week i went and extended my uh, license because it is only there till april 2023 and my work permit is there till september 23 right so till then i have uh, um extended so ideally once you are a pr uh, i'm a pr uh, permanent resident or a citizen and all those things you can have a 5 year license so i think it's around 100 dollars for 5 years so either you can pay 25 per year or you know you can split it uh, pay together as 100 dollars and all and um, so these are the basic things of taking a license i'm thinking if i missed on something uh yeah so this is this is it it's not very complicated but i would suggest that you go by the rules and regulations of uh, the place that you're coming to or if you're going to ontario or any other place re, uh, like look up the information regarding that and give your test like uh, don't be oh, i i would say that most of the times people fail a test or you know fail a uh, learners or rotors mainly because they are either overconfident or overstressed uh, so try to try to like be calm about i know it's it's not easy it's a little difficult but be more calm about it and then you know like um try to get the class 5 license in the first go itself because um it really gives you the freedom to drive without any restrictions right so it's important so i took my license in 21 uh september i'm almost going to complete two years still now uh, things have been good like it's not like 
uh, very strict or you know like uh, it's it's not very crowded or the traffic is not crazy here as long as you follow the rules and regulations properly there's no issues you need to give priority to uh, pedestrians cyclists uh, and also the fellow uh, you know car drivers on the road because sometimes you also get pulled over for not actually you know for confusing the driver behind you so i i, I once i was in a car with one of my friend and what happened is i think he had turned the uh, beam on uh, and uh, he, he the drive i mean the police pulled him over for that because he was telling he's disturbing the other driver so consideration is always given to the other drivers on the road or the pedestrians and you know uh, people are like uh, because see why i'm telling you this is because it is important to give uh, uh, you know um, consideration to pedestrians mainly because during winter you're wearing all the gear you can hardly see so these are the people walking on the road right so there might be a lot of reasons why they're given importance but i feel that during winter especially uh, you know it's very very difficult to walk on the roads and cross the road and all especially with the uh, you know like the hooded uh, uh, caps and all those kind of things it's very difficult so as long as you follow all the rules it's it's a pleasant drive in saskatchewan especially during summer it's so beautiful even winter is beautiful it's a very different feel now uh, winter driving is a little risky i will do a very separate uh, video on that on you know winter driving and car maintenance uh, during winter uh, so i guess that's all guys if you have any questions specific to saskatchewan driving license and things like that comment below i'll be more than happy to assist you uh, so like share and subscribe and share it with your friends who's moving to saskatchewan so that you know they also get this information